The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storylines with Nick Eatman. What is up? It is time for Cowboys Storyline. I am Nick Eatman here, and on Friday, October the 6th, it's that week. Cowboys 49ers. Just a couple days away, we will leave tomorrow to go up to San Francisco or Santa Clara, where I think that's where the game is. San Jose, where we stay. I don't. I, I don't really know. Said so that's one of those places where, you know, it's like surprise me. You don't even really know where we're gonna stay. It doesn't really matter. You know where the game's gonna be, and that's all that matters to you guys is what happens Sunday night. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a fun one. You know, I've been thinking back and forth. I, I'll be. I'll be honest. Knowing that Friday is the day where we have to make picks, um, I've been I've been kind of back and forth all week and really leaning towards San Francisco. But I think I'm gonna flip. I think I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm that high school senior that 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 changes his commitment, takes a different hat. I think I'm, I'm going with that. I mean, obviously, look look at me. I'm going with Cowboys today. Um, as I watch highlights here on NFL Network of the Bears in Washington, it. It helped me with my pick today, honestly. Emotions matter. You cannot tell me. You cannot tell me. And I tweeted this, so at least I have what, what the young guys say, or the young kids say, receipts. I uh, I tweeted this out. I was like, you're not losing two losses in one day. It's not happening. You're not going to lose a legendary Dick Butkus who, who passed away at the age of 80. Um you're not losing the, you know, him. The, the, he, that's the Chicago Bear through and through. And then go and you're going to lose 15 straight games. You're going to lose to Washington on Thursday night. Not going to happen. Look at him. 40 to 20. Dominated that game. Uh, do those guys know who Dick Butkus is? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. But um, they definitely played inspired for, for one reason or another. And I just feel like emotions do matter. It, it matters. You have to be controlled about it. You, you can't be, you know, reckless. But I do think that that the, the Cowboys, you can just kind of see it on their faces. You can see it in practice. This game means something to them. They know what's happened the last couple of years. Now, not to say that San Francisco is just going through the motions up there. I'm sure it's a big deal for them as well. But um, but yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be a heck of a game. Can't wait to, to to watch it. So, and I know you guys feel the same way. So we're gonna get to the calls right here. 888-855-2297. That is the number to call in. You can text on the text line 817-290-3298. We do have two callers already on the line. So let's get to it. Peter in Syracuse, New York. You're first up here on the show. Hey Nick, how you doing? I'm good, Peter. How are you? I'm good. Hey, I just want to, one thing. Uh, last week, you had a, a young lady come in who does media for her school. Yes. My son also does media for his high school where we live. Okay. Um, and and today is homecoming game against one of the biggest state in state rivals. All right. And I'm like I'm like oh this is like you know Syracuse or this is like um, 49ers Cowboys game you know big game coming coming on these guys usually end up meeting in sectionals and everything else. That's awesome. Uh, that, yeah, my boy, he's he's going to be doing uh, reporting, and he's going to be doing uh, color today for the game. Oh, that's awesome, man. C- congrats on that. And and you know what? Um, I- I'll, I'll say something after the call. I bet you have another question as well about that. You have another Cowboy question or prediction or comment? Well, actually, what I have, well, uh, me and my boys will be actually up in Buffalo to catch the Cowboys game this year. First game I've ever seen for anybody. Nice. And I do have a question, okay. and I have a prediction. All right. All right. My question is, if you could take one player from any Cowboy team and put him in for just this game, who would it be? Okay. Who would it be for you? Uh, who, who's your guy? Uh, I was a, Deion Sanders. Okay. I'd move Bland back over to cover the slot because I think if you had Deion in there as your corner and put Bland in there as your slot cover, it, they'd be really hard-pressed to make good passes. That's true. It's hard to beat. Okay. Okay. Uh, and my prediction is I got the Cowboys winning 27-24. All right. All right. Well, thanks for the call, Peter. Appreciate that. Good luck to your son today um, with the uh, color commentary. That's awesome. And also writing the stories of the game. That's that's great. And, you know, I, my, my take on high school football, I love it. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. And when you say, oh, it's like a rivalry game, it's kind of like Cowboys 49ers. 
I believe that. Like, like, yeah, for the, everyone else that's listening, uh, you know, no, it's it's not. It's you know, the Cowboys 49ers is on a different level than than anything. But I do believe that when and you're in the moment, you know, I, then you're you're th- it's your high school team, it's your game. Uh, it is the biggest thing going on. That's what makes high school football so great. Most of these kids aren't playing college, and the one you know, and, and then the ones yeah. that do aren't going to play in the NFL. Thanks for the call, Peter. Um, thank, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, thank you. But but no, I, I I just think that it's it's one of those situations where high school football it just it's so it's so pure. It's so great. Um, I, I I love everything about it, and I know for those kids and, and all over the world, Friday night, all over you know the whole country, that it is the biggest game going on. That's what makes it so awesome. Um, I'll be at a game my, myself tonight. Um, Deion Sanders. That's that's a, anyway after losing Trayvon Diggs. I mean, if you could pick any player, the question was if you could pick any player from any era to play in this game, who would it be? Sure. I mean, that's that's the one spot where you, you did suffer an injury. I think the offensive line is going to be pretty good. Um, Jason Witten? Wouldn't, wouldn't mind having a tight end that I know is going to help block. I know he's going to be a, a reliable, you know, red zone type guy. Um, I could take that, you know. Marion Barber. Man, having a, I mean, it's going to be physical. It's going to be a physical game. Um, but, but yeah, I mean that you can't go wrong there, but Dion, I mean, when you, when you say Dion, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to beat that one. All right. Gary in New Mexico is our next caller. Gary, what's up? Hey, Nick, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. If I could pick any player in Cowboys history to play in this game, it would be Roger Staubach. Okay. Not even close. Roger never lost to the 49ers. And I've got a trivia question for you. Uh Oh, okay. Who caught? Who caught Roger Staubach's last touchdown pass? Hmm. Last touchdown pass. Like, is this regular season or is this playoffs? Is this just ever? No, this, is, this is playoffs. This is okay. against the Rams in 1979, his last game. Against the who? Against the who? It would have been against the Rams, the Rams. in 1979. Divisional playoff game. Cowboys uh, lost. Yeah, they lost the game. Lost. So I know I know Tony Hill caught the pass in the in the Redskins game to, to win that one. Um to get to I guess to get to the playoffs or get to the divisional round. But in that Rams game, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna just guess. I really don't know. I'm gonna guess Preston Pearson. I have no idea. That's just a guess. Hey, that, that is a great guess to bring up Preston Pearson, but it was Jay Saldy. Jay Saldy. Okay. Jay Saldy caught Rogers last touchdown. Okay. Good. Good. Quick That's a good comment. question. Go ahead. Good. Yeah, thanks. A quick comment. I've got a good feeling about this Cowboys game coming up. All right. I think they're downright better than the 49ers. And I think they're not only going to win this game Sunday night, I think they're going to send a message. I think they're going to go out there. I think it'll be tough. But I think Dallas, in the end, is going to win this game convincingly. I can yeah. – I say I could see that. I mean, I see any scenario, you know. I mean, but I – if if you're right about the first part, you'll be right about the second. I mean, if they are if they are really a better football team, then then I think I think you're right about that. They'll go and do that. Here's my one more comment on that. And I love Dak Prescott. I root for him hard. But Dak, he needs to be the reason we win, not just the reason we don't lose. Does that make sense? I th- yeah. Yep. It's a, it, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now, it, it, again, you know how I st- hope you know you know how I feel about this. You know, playing to win, playing not to lose. It's the same thing. But I, what you're saying is, is is instead of the going out there and not making mistakes, don't turn the ball over, don't lose the game, and all that. Be the guy that goes and throws the touchdown passes. Being the guy that runs and makes all the plays. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I'm. I yeah. mean, I'm fine with it either way. You know, but but I I do think that. Uh, the Cowboys are, are at their best when Dak is playing that way. All right. Thanks for the call, Gary. Um, we, let's go to a, a third caller. Let's go to uh, Raquel in the Bay Area. Thank you. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? This is Raquel from the Bay Area. How are you? I am good. I'm good. You going to the game? Um, no, I'm not going to the game. I had a bad experience, uh, but I went to the last game, that uh, divisional game. At, yeah. At that, at that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's on your mind? Uh, let's see. I am a fourth-generation Cowboys fan, 
and um, my p- parents are from San Angelo, Texas. Okay. So the roots come from there. And I have, if I could pick one player to play in this game, it would be Troy Aikman. All right. Because he, he, just, he just rose to the occasion against the 40 Winers. That's what I call them. Okay. And my question to you is, who's going to make the first uh, turnover? What team's going to get the first turnover? Is it going to be either a fumble or an interception? All Thank right. you. All right. And have a good day. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Raquel. Thanks for the call. Um, well, you know, that that's a... That's not just a fun question where you're just like, oh, you know, who's going to do the first, you know, touchdown or whatever. I mean, this this right here might set up the entire game. You know, who who has the first turnover? Who makes the first mistake? That that's kind of what happens in a game like this. You know, I always feel like when you're talking about, it, you know, there's a lot of boxing analogies that come into play when you're when you're talking about, you know, big games like this, heavyweight, you know, matchup like this. Uh, and it's also, you know, who strikes first, who can, who gets that first punch in. Cause that sometimes can change the whole, the whole thing, the whole fight. Um, and also, you know, and who, who makes the first mistake, who, who lets their guard down. So I think the turnover that that's going to be big, you know, the, the 49ers don't turn the ball over much. I think they have one turnover. So, and the Cowboys aren't turning the ball over a lot either. So that it, it's going to go, that's going to be a big deal. Um, I don't know about making the prediction there, but I'll just say this. Whoever does turn the ball over first will lose. That's that's what I will say. Um, I like I like where these callers are thinking. You know, great, great shout out to, to Peter from uh Syracuse on the first call because he's he's he threw out a, a question uh, about which player would you, you know, it's a fun question, which player would you want to have? And the next two callers have chimed in as well. And so that that's always fun. And Troy Aikman and Roger Straubach, they want these steady, steady guys to be in there uh, running the show. Um, I like, I like the Dion. I like, I like, you know, Jason Witten. I like a bruising running back if, if you had that. So you can't go wrong here. All right. Let's go to the phone lines for Brian in Kansas City. Brian, what's up? Hey. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I love that question too. So go for it. This is this is no knock on Terrence Steele, but if I could have anybody for this game against that defense in 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 San Francisco, I know what you're going to say. I'm going to say Eric, Eric Williams. Williams. He is going to come it. with the biggest attitude you can imagine. Yeah, you need you need a you need a guy like this. You need a hammer. You need somebody that says, says let's just fight. Let's 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 fight. Um, Eric Williams could do it. I love it. That is an outstanding. That's an outstanding pick. I mean, again, all these picks are going to be great. But but I love what you're thinking. I love I love the the mindset of thinking that way. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Hey, so my old timer. You know, this guy was never a superstar. I just thought he had. You know, we've had great names on the Cowboys: Prime Time and Hollywood Henderson. I loved this guy's name when I was a kid: Golden Richards. <laughs> Golden Richards. Yep. Yep. There's no doubt. Golden Richards. Um, so, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Do you have a Golden Richards story? I don't have a Golden Richards story, but I'll say this, though. When I, because he, he was, he played before I, um, you know, really was following the team. But when I did, when I was following back in the early 80s, they, they almost, they wanted to have a, a recreation of Golden Richards. And I don't know if there's a guy named, uh, named Doug Donnelly, number 83. He had long blonde hair. He was a wide receiver. Uh, I think that's what Golden Richards number was was eighty three. So it was almost like he was going to be the next Golden Richards. It didn't really turn out that way. But but I, I know that there was a there was like this you know infatuation with him and the fan base. Like he's going to be the next Golden Richards because they looks the same. But it didn't always work out. So hey, absolutely, yeah. You know, it's just sometimes you see that, right? You see teams try to recreate their previous magic. You know, or these this was yeah. the, this is what we had, and we just put these pieces back together. Somehow, it's going to work out. But so I'll give you my prediction for the game, and let the next person on, man. All right. So I'm, we're going to speak it into existence, brother. This is going to be the statement game, and it's Cowboys 20, 49ers fall short with 18. 20, Have a good day, 20 brother. 20 to 18. Thank you, Brian. 20 to 18. That's going to be that would be a weird game, you know, but but that's that's how it is. Now nowadays teams going for two all the time and you you have weird scores. 
a little bit and, or just maybe maybe the 49ers have uh, trouble in the red zone and they have to kick six field goals. I've seen that happen too. All right, Jamal in DeSoto, Texas. First time caller. Jamal, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Nick? How, How you doing? Uh-huh. I'm doing well, man. Excited about Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, uh, uh, what, what's your, what's your, uh, you don't have to give me a prediction if you don't want, but what, what's on your mind? Oh, man, uh, um, I'll give you a prediction at the end, but that's a few things. Um, first, when I, if I could pick any player to have for this game, man, give me the playmaker. <laughs> Red zone issues wouldn't be a problem pairing him up with CD. Oh, man. Uh, and then he, history, he's always had great games against the 49ers. That's true. That is definitely true about that. Uh, second thing I want to say is I feel good about this game because, for one, I feel good that we're going to have our O-line intact. Last year, a lot of people don't remember that we didn't have Terrence Steele. Uh, I think that was a, um, a mighty blow to us as far as how we played last year. Uh, so having the offensive line back, and I also feel good, even with the injury to Diggs, I feel a lot better about my cornerback room this year as well. Um, the final uh, question kind of you know, deals with the secondary as far as the future. Uh, with the contracts for Hooker and, and, and uh, Dono, and then also the uh, great and surprising play of Marquise Bell and, mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me, Wanye Thomas, do you see um, J. Ron Kirst being the odd man out? Next, next year? Yeah, for next year. Yes, sir. Um, all right. You know, I, I think. I appreciate the call, uh, Jamal. Um, I, you know, he's he's an unrestricted free agent, so his contract is up. Um, I, that that could be the case. Let's see how this season, you know, kind of plays out. It's t- it's tough to do that just because, you know, unfortunately injuries happen. Injuries happen later in the season. I mean, and and the narrative of changes, you know, altogether. All I mean, go back and just look at. At week five of last year, you know, if the Cowboys and 49ers, you know, it was it was Jimmy Garoppolo and Cooper Rush were the starting quarterbacks. I don't even know if Christian McCaffrey was on the team. Now here we are, week five of this year, and and you know, it's a completely different story. So but my point is, is by the end of the the, the long year, you never know. I mean, if J. Ron Curse plays, you know, let's say he shuts down Kittle, shuts down some other tight ends, makes some big plays, you know, that that might change a lot of things. So it's hard it's hard to say. But right now, yeah, when you're just looking at it and you say, well, all right, well, he's he's unrestricted. They can't pay everyone. They've already paid, Don, uh, you know, Donovan Wilson. They've already paid Malik Hooker, like you said. They got the other two young guys. You would think that he would be the odd man out on that scenario. But it's a long season. Let's see what happens. Because I can tell you this: if he's a guy that 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 you have to have on this football team, Jerry has proven over the years he'll make it happen and, and figure out that you know how to get him, keep him on the team. All right, um, Hector in El Paso, Texas. You're next, and you're a first time caller. Hector, what's up? Yes, sir. First time caller. Been following a few shows over the years. Appreciate Love every that. Every single one of them, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for calling. Um, Actually, that first caller that called in, you know who I'd like to put in there just with the physicality that he used to have? Uh, Roy Williams, man. Imagine having him, yeah. D-Law, Micah Parsons in there, him covering that back. Oh, man, that'd be something to see. Yeah, yeah. Roy, early Roy Williams, early Roy Williams yeah. when he wasn't wasn't worried about any kind of penalties and rules that they created for him. Just go out there and play. Uh, now he said it. Roy has said it. I, I uh, we did a documentary on him, and he said he'd be playing for free if he was in if he was in the league right now because he said he would be fined all the time, and he's not going to change. He said I'm not going to change the way I play, so I'd be playing for free. I'd be fined oh, more. No. <laughs> Oh no, he's a very, he was a very physical player, and that's what I was going to say. You know, before before all those rules, mm-hmm. you know, he'd be amazing to see in there with with this defense we have going on right now. Definitely. Um, one of the questions I had, I've had for a while. I've I've had it even last year. You know, the thing that worries me about Dak, and I'm a big Dak fan, but the thing that worries me about him is is he just tries to force a lot of things sometimes where, where you know, just, just take the check down a lot of the times. And I think that was one of the biggest mistakes he had last year against the 49ers was that he was trying to force things and it just, you know, just go for the easy passes, go for the available player. Uh, and if, if I think if we do that this year, you know, if, if instead of him trying, and I know he's dialed back on it, this year, because I don't see as much, you know, him trying to force the ball deep that much anymore. Of 
course, that goes into what McCarthy's trying to do this year. But if he, I don't know, I guess maybe the game just happens too fast to where he well, doesn't see the, that quick, you know, dump off that he has available. Well, let me most of the time. let me ask you this though, Hector. Are you are you are you one that has a problem with the red zone issues? Uh, I'm not because I've been okay. seeing all these drops happening in the okay. red zone. I, I don't. I'm not too worried about the red that's, zone. And that's fine. I think he, that's fine. I, I, I pre, you know, thanks for thanks for the call, Hector. I appreciate that. And and the reason why I asked you that is just because you can't can't always have it both ways. If you say Dak is he he's he's forcing it, you know, he's too much. He's doing the checkdowns. He's playing it a little, you know, safe, you know, like because I, you said that you know you think he's forcing it too much. You want him to take more checkdowns, but at the same time, I think he's doing that. And that's why the red zone issues kind of are what they are. That you're not forcing it so much in there. So you can't always have it both ways. And I hear that sometimes. I hear fans that say, man, if we can just get you know Dak to play safe, but we got to score in the red zone, it, they kind of go hand in hand a little bit. So, um, But thanks for the call. Thanks for, for getting in. I, I, love, I love seeing these first-time callers. That, that's great. Um, all right, Josh in North Carolina. Josh, you're next. How we doing, sir? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. First time caller. Love your articles. Oh. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm ac- I'm actually a teacher in North Carolina. Uh, okay. I'm in my classroom right now, so my kids are listening to uh, to us talk. What's um, up, class? So my question. Can you say, hey guys, can you say hello? Oh, this is, this is awesome. I- Awesome. Hey, this is what this is what a Friday should be. Okay, this would be a Friday. It'd be fun Friday. Let's let's call in a show. Let's talk about the Cowboys. Love it. Love it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So uh, I guess my question is, is two parts. Uh, the first part is I saw how well the Rams um, kind of slowed down the 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 San Francisco Forty ers offense. So what did they do particular? On on that side of the ball to to slow down Brock Purdy and, and Christian McCaffrey and kind of hold them back a little bit. Uh, I know they still scored uh, thirty points, but they they kind of I, I think they I guess they just match up well with them. They know them really well. Uh, I guess my question is, how does the Cowboys do that kind of same uh, aspect? And the second part is on the flip side with with Dallas uh, offense coming in there. Which player, in your opinion, has to get going? Uh, to really put us over the edge uh, against the 49ers' powerful defense. In my opinion, I think it's got to be Brandon Cooks. You've got to okay. get him out on, get him um, uh, spaced out, uh, get him some mitch, uh, mismatches against that secondary. Uh, I'll hang up and I'll listen to your uh, thoughts. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that's a that's a first. Yesterday we had a call from uh, South Korea. That was a first today. I can't. I don't know if we've ever had one where in front of a, a whole class. Uh, that's. I didn't have teachers like that, man. I mean, of course, you know, the internet really wasn't around when I was in, in, in school like that, but man, that, that's, that's cool right there. So, um, thank you, Josh, for the, uh, the call. It's probably Mr. Something, you know, they don't call the kids probably don't call you Josh in there, but thank you, uh, for the call and, uh, and, and good luck to, to the rest of the day in, in your, your class. Good questions. How do they slow down, you know, Brock Purdy and, 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 and McCaffrey and I think it's the offense that does that. I think the offense is what slows down the defense. The defense is going to do what they do. You know, they, they have to tackle. They have to make sure and, and, and don't let these guys get extra yards. Uh, they got to tackle in space. But I think the offense, if the offense can move the ball, control the ball, move the sticks, keep score points, put pressure on them, but keep them off the field, I think that's the number one way that the offense can kind of help slow down the 49ers offense by you know, being in, in control of the game. Um, I like what you said, which offensive player. I think Brandon Cooks, he needs to, to have a big game. I needs to kind of show that element. I kind of like Jake Ferguson in this one. I, I, I need a tight end. That it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough sledding. You're going to have to, to extend you know, the, the drives. I think Ferguson's the type of guy that can do that. He needs to have a really big game. So um, that's that would be my pick. But uh, good, good questions right there. All right, Travis in San Antonio. I know this isn't first-time caller for you. Travis, San Antonio, what's up? It is not a first time. But happy Friday to you, Nick. And, you too. Uh, I was prepared for those questions I asked the other day. So if Woody's back next week, I will have a. I got to think of a good question for him. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I'll do that. But I have my score prediction. I've got this twenty-three twenty, 
and it's a Brandon Aubrey game-winning field goal from 40 to 45 yards. Oof. Oof. I do think Turpin will make a big return. Uh, maybe not a touchdown, but I think he'll put us in position for a, for a score. So um, I got that. And then I wanted to see what you thought. I mean, I know every Cowboys fan, and I'm sure you guys in the building, when I saw the news yesterday that um, that Tyron was practicing, I just was like, "All right, just shut everybody down. Let's let's get to the game. Let's have all five of them because I think that's a that's a huge, huge thing. Yeah, um, they can't be overlooked. Um, and I just hope we win. Yeah, uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Travis. Appreciate that. And you know that that creates a lot of depth on your offensive line when you know they haven't had that. They haven't had that the offensive line to these. They haven't had these these starting five uh, since training camp. You know, uh, from left to right." Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, Tyler Biotish, uh, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele. That that would be your your starting five if, if it all holds up until a Sunday night, which means Chuma Idoga is a game day backup at tackle. Could also play guard. So that that's that's good too to have have the depth there. Have have some guys that that are veterans that can play. So. You know, really having having more than five linemen uh, for available for this game that that's that's big. So, all right, uh, let's take a break here on uh, Cowboy Storyline. Come right back. We got another caller on the line. We got another phone line open. We'll get some text questions if if they roll in as well. Be right back on Storyline. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable, and now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back, back to back, Cowboys Storylines. Let's go back to the phone lines here on Cowboys Storylines. Can get right back to it. A few more minutes to go here on Friday. We'll make some picks here. You guys are already throwing a lot of picks in. Uh, I don't see any 49er picks. I see Cowboy picks. Um, but I see some close games, which I, th- I think that's what it's been the last couple of years. I can't imagine it not being, but who knows? Who knows how these the, this weird NFL season uh, plays out? All right, G in New Jersey, you're next. G, what's up? Well, Nick, I ain't got a classroom behind me, and I'm <laughs> I'm only in Jersey, so I'm gonna you know dim it down the expectations here. Okay? That's okay. Hey, but, that's all right. That it's all <laughs> but good. Nick, listen, man. Um, I think this is a great, great matchup um, for the Cowboys either way. Why? Because if you win, you know that the team is good enough to be at the top of the NFC. And if you lose, it gives this front office the opportunity to see what it is that the team is lacking right now, right after week five, so that it can give them a push to perhaps go out um, and make that move that we're dreaming of, right, to make this team better down the stretch because we'll know how far off we are. 
Um, but I have a question for you, Nick. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to some some games that had all the hype in the regular season. Um, I was at the 2008 debacle in Philadelphia winner take all, right? Um, and I was also at the 10-year anniversary of September 11th at MetLife. And those games had a lot of hype and juice. But my question for you is, man, what game was it for, for Nick Eatman, right? What, like, what regular season game had the hype for you, man? Mm. Uh, prediction 27-24. Let's go, Cowboys. Thank you, Nick. All right. Um, man, kind of put me on the spot there as far as just just the hype of the game. Um, you know, the, the one that I can think of that, that was hyped really, really big didn't work out well for, for the team, but was, was in 2007 against the Patriots. I mean, that's the one that I remember because they were undefeated. I think the Cowboys were undefeated. I know they were undefeated. They went all the way to the Super Bowl undefeated. Uh, but the Cowboys were undefeated, too. They just uh, had, had come back from that great win in, in Buffalo. And uh, there was a lot of hype on that one. And that's one that I remember of, you know, if you when you play 60 minutes, like you keep playing the entire game, and you see just how good, you know, like the Patriots were. Because the Cowboys were in it. It was close. I think they had a defensive touchdown that, to make it, you know, a really close game in the third quarter. But they didn't They didn't keep it. They didn't keep scoring. The Patriots did. And before you know, it was a blowout, you know, or at least that's the way it looked you know, on the scoreboard. So that's one that I can remember. There's been others. You know, there, there's been other games where, you know, they were, they were like that. Um, you know, just a lot of just a- anticipation, but uh, that's the one that come kind of that it was kind of like this, where it's early season and you kind of feel like you know maybe you know, this will be something you know for a preview or something for for down the road. Um, but yeah, that that was a that was that was definitely a, a game uh, to remember. You know, 07's that 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 special year where I think that they. They were really good. You know, the Cowboys were a really, really good football team. Probably the best team that I, I've ever covered uh, since I've been here in the last 25 seasons. Uh, I, I think that one was was really good. Um, you know, but they they had an injury. I think Terrell Owens' injury later in the season in Carolina, I think that changed the entire season. Uh, he was not the same player. He tried to come back. Give him credit for that. He tried to come back. He wasn't the same against the Giants in that game. And uh, and the Giants were what you know they were playing at a very very high level obviously and won the Super Bowl. All right, uh, let's go to the line in San Antonio. We got Manny in San Antonio. Manny, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? First time caller, man. Thanks All for having me. All man. right, thank you. Yeah, so if I could have one player back that that I think that could help us out would be prime time because I know with Trayvon going down, mm-hmm. another shutdown corner would really help us. But you know what, man. People sleeping on Bland. He ain't no pushover. He ain't no chump. Look at his numbers. I think he's doing all right. Now, as far as San Francisco, as much as I hate to say this, man, they are a good team. I ain't going to repeat that again. (laughs) But guess what? We are, too. too. You know, that that offensive line is tough. But guess what? So is our defensive line. You know, so my question would be, other than establishing the run game, what other key components do we need to have to to come out successful? Because, I mean, look. People talk about Brock Purdy. Yeah, he's doing great. But guess what? Brock and Zach are neck and neck. I think it's going to be a close game. I still think Cowboys win 24-23. What say you, brother? Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Um, Yeah, I mean, it it is going to be stop the run and also run the ball. I mean, that's always going to be the key to every game like this. You know, and and special teams will will factor in. Special teams is going to be uh, uh, important uh, in this one. I think that that's what happens when you have two good teams that that are good on offense, good on defense. I think the 49ers are the only team, I looked this up, the only team in the NFL – that are in the top five of both offense and defense. I think they're two in um, offense and five in defense. And the Cowboys are like, I have to look it up. They're like three and, and ten or something like that. But, um, you know, both both really good. But but to me, that's a sign of a really good team was when you're top five in both. So to hang with them, 
special teams. And, and look at last year. You know, last year the Cowboys could not, you know, make extra points. They were they were struggling. The confidence just wasn't there to make kicks. The 49ers were kicking field goals left and right. But the Cowboys did have a big fumble recovery that should have led to more points the, down there, um, you know, in the third quarter. So uh, special teams, I think, will, will have a huge uh, factor uh, in this game. So um, we will see how, how it plays out. All right, Mike in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Mike, you're next. Hey, Nick. Hey, I just want to tell you I love the show. Thank you. But I was wondering. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the Cowboys are going to win Sunday. I was wondering, though, did you see Des Bryant on the uh, the survival show thing that, that uh, the second season? Special Forces, I believe is what it's called. Yeah. No, I, I, I did yeah. not. I did not see that. Um, let me guess. He's he's um, He's emotional. He's uh, oh, yeah. he he's, yeah, the, he he gets into it with someone. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, the I mean, first, yeah, Des. The first, the first day he was throwing up. He was, <laughs> you know, they were having to do all this stuff. The second day, he got he just threw a fit. Uh, told him to get this harness thing off of me, and he quit. He quit the show. He quit the second day. Hmm. I didn't know that. Um. Yeah, well. You know, I, I thought it was going to be something better than that because if I remember correctly, his very first practice with the team, uh, he can, he comes out all eyes on him, rookie minicamp. And Dez is out there, and it's like, you know, early May, and it's pretty hot out there at Valley Ranch. And Dez is, is looking great. He has great catches. He's doing he's, – he looks the part. He threw up all over the field. Like, he, he you know, he just wasn't prepared for that. So that didn't surprise me as much as when you told me that. But, but, um, but yeah, and then throwing a fit, getting upset and all that stuff. Oh, that's, that's Des, you know, he's loud. But, but I didn't know that about the, the show. I didn't, I've seen the commercials. I, I assumed he was on it for a little bit. Um, nope. All right. Well, two days. He's gone. All right. Well, you know that, that's that's a that's a tough. I mean, that's a tough show. I mean, obviously it was a, it, the special forces. I mean, you're you're asking those guys to do a lot, a lot of people to get out of their comfort zone. Uh, but you know, I couldn't do it, so I'm not gonna sit here and talk about it. But uh, Robert Ory's hanging in. Robert Ory, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, guy's got about eight rings. I mean, he he's he's been. <laughs> He, he's not always the, the 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 guy. He wasn't always. He was never the guy. He was never the guy to like. Oh, watch him. But but when when he was open, he hit the shot. Big shot, Rob, for sure. So, yep. all right, Mike. Appreciate the call. Uh, let's go to Bob in Rio Grande Valley. Bob, what's up? Still on pins and needles? I think that was you yesterday that said that pins and needles. Yeah, yeah I tell you what, man. We got blessed yesterday. We got an inch of rain, and we hadn't had any rain in six months. <laughs> but uh, I got a quick one for you. All right. It's, uh, blast from the past. That the, you know, boy, if we could have this guy or someone like him today, Marion Barber. Yeah. That your short game. That uh, uh, third and two, third and three, third and one, or goal line situations. He dig and dig and dig. My prediction: I got the Cowboys twenty-seven. I got the Forty ers eighteen, and I think we win going away. All right. All right. Have, yeah. Have a great weekend. You man. too. You Thank too, Bob. You know, Mary and Barbara, I, and I mentioned him earlier, too, for this uh, question. Um, and it's the same with what the caller said about Eric Williams. It's it's a toughness thing, you know, and that uh, a mindset of um, you're not pushing us around today. You're just not. It's not going to happen. All that crap y'all did in pregame last time and trying to jump in there. And, and, and if anyone doesn't remember this, because I think I've referenced it a couple of times. Um, you know, obviously the week before in Tampa Bay, Brett Maher had missed five extra uh, extra points. And so there was a huge, huge debate on what was going to happen there. A lot of discussion there. So in the pregame, they were they were on the field like they always do. And it's usually just just holder, snapper, kicker. That's really at that point. That was the only three for both teams. They're on this side, this side. Then they kind of switch sides just so they can kick. That was really the only people that are that are typically out there. Uh, then returners come in for the punter and all that stuff. But at that point, and so the Cowboys are kicking on one end zone, and all of a sudden, a couple of guys not in uniform yet, but you know they had headphones on and they had their your pads on. And it's Trent Williams and Debo Samuel, and it might have been another guy, and they are just. In the middle of the snap, the, the the snapper to the holder, Trent Williams leaning down, getting right in Anger's face, telling him something, just kind of in the middle of the whole thing, and not not letting them warm up. 
talking trash, laughing, joking, whatever, just trying to get in in uh, Maher's head and, and whatever. Um, Jake McQuaid, the former snapper for this team, I believe he's in Detroit. Uh, I could be wrong there, but he's not. He's not with the team anymore. But he was he was injured. He was not the snapper uh, last year, but he was at on the trip and he was there. He was on the sideline. He ran over and he got in the middle of it and, and he was like, "Listen, um, I know Robbie Gold. Robbie, he goes, Robbie, I, I I'll stand right in the front of your stuff and we'll make sure that you know if we're gonna do this, this is what we're gonna do." And it ended up Robbie Gold had to come in and push the guys off the side, and and you know, but at that point, you know, it, that was the the gamesmanship or whatever was going on. Uh, it was Bush League to me, but whatever. But but it, I guess you could say it worked. All I'm saying is, is that I don't think that kind of stuff is going to happen in this game. And if it does, it's going to be it's going to be really it's going to be fun. So pay attention if you can to anything that's happening before the game. All right, Albert in Tucson. Albert, what's up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm I'm going to stick on the same note with the kicker. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say, you know, uh, I have a lot of confidence in. Uh, our kicker, you know, yeah. Uh, reg- regardless of where he's, uh, you know, his background, um, what he's proven to me, what I mean, it also shows, you know, the front office. You know, they got rid of his competition. They said, hey, you know, in training camp, you're going to be the guy, and you know, uh, his first kick didn't start well. But um, I have a lot of confidence in that, and I'm going to do a pick. I'm, I'm sorry, um, a uh, my prediction for the game. Um, I got us winning thirty-five ten. Oh God! Um, I believe that uh, the two, the last two meetings, yeah, they were, uh, you know, decided by uh, maybe a touchdown or less. Um, and we were in those games, but uh, we're our confidence is high. I'm really confident in our kicker, and uh, we're going to do great things this year. So, go Cowboys, right. and have a good weekend. And uh, I'll probably see you on TV. All right. All right, Albert. If if thanks for the call. If the Cowboys win this game, like you just predicted, thirty-five to ten, you better call on Monday. Okay, you 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 have to call. Uh, make sure you you get in one way or another. Because uh, if 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 you get that one right, then you yeah, I'll, we'll have you on for for a little bit. You'll be able to to kind of you. It'll be your day. You can just walk in and, and gloat, thirty-five to ten, or anything. Close to that. I mean, that's that would be uh, that would be something. Uh, but I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, oh, NFL's a you know, strange lady. NFL's weird. NFL's got you never know what's going to happen. And then say, well, that that's not going to happen. You never know. You just never know. But man, I, I don't see that happening. That 49ers aren't that type of team really to get to get blown out. Um, and I just this doesn't have that kind of feel. But. Who knows? You, you just never know. All right, let's go. We got two more callers, so we're going to do it quickly here. Sean in Tennessee. Sean, what's up? What's up, man? Hey, um, on the previous callers with the uh, person you bring, I'm bringing Charles Haley, man, because there's right. another dog on that defense. True. Like, with him with Michael Parsons, no, he ain't doing anything with the entire defense with Charles Haley and Michael Parsons together. Um, yeah. But my question for you is, with the defense the way it is, if you're set, if you're Dan Quinn, are you all out on stopping Christian McCaffrey? Because to me, if Ayuk and Debo beat you, okay, I'm fine with that. But you can't let Christian McCaffrey beat you in this game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I agree. Like your your game plan in the game plan has to be stopping Christian McCaffrey. I I agree. Okay. I I agree with you because what that does is is I mean that's it's the easiest thing in the world is to hand the ball off or or throw a screen. I mean that you're not asking Brock Purdy to do a whole lot there. I mean he doesn't have to do anything and then and then those are the guys that are that are, you know, if if they are if they're beating you, then that means they're beating you on first down, second down, not even third and long. But but if if you can get that stopped, now you're you're forcing not only Purdy to drop back and try to find his guys 
Um, now, obviously, Debo does you know different things with the way he the way they use him. But you're basically you're asking the the passing game to get you know to get involved, and that plays into the Cowboys' hand. So, hundred percent, I agree that it's, it has to start uh, with with McCaffrey. Don't forget that they stopped him last year. I mean, he had about thirty eight yards rushing. He didn't have a lot of touches. Didn't have a lot of yards. Uh, he did score a touchdown late in the game. But um, but he wasn't a major factor. But you know that was it was other things that was the Cowboys leading to the Cowboys not having that success. All right, last caller. We're gonna go Joe and Stanford. Joe, you're typically the first guy, but now you're gonna be the last guy. Joe, what's up? Hey man, glad I caught you. It's been a long week. I haven't been able to catch up with you. So uh, real quick, I think that the game is gonna go along of old traditions of San Francisco games past and the tradition of. Alvin Harper, Jesse Holly, receivers that you never really got their due until they did it. I'm going to go with the Jalen Tolbert making a huge play somewhere towards the end of this game. We're going to win 20 to 17. All right. All right. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah, you're right. You never know who's going to be that that guy to make the play, and he's he's starting to look like he could be that 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 type of uh, receiver. You know, just that's going to come in. He's going to play. Uh, you know, uh, on spot duty. But but you know, every, every once in a while, the the starting receiver is going to need a, need a break. And 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 the the best thing is is that Dak. It's all about the confidence from the the quarterback. I don't think Dak's worried about throwing it to him. I think he trusts him. And uh, and and that's that's like that's level one right there. I mean really level two you got to have confidence in yourself and then you got to have confidence in the quarterback uh or, or the quarterback has had confidence in you so looks like both those things are happening so i could see Jalen tolbert being a difference maker because that's that's what it, that's what happens 49ers 49ers storyline if there is a guy that's that's doing that for their website he's he's not talking about Jalen tolbert he's saying gotta stop cd Go stop the run, stop Pollard. You know they're fine, and then that's when a guy like Cooks or a guy like Tolbert or Gallup makes a big play. All right, great scores. I've got. I'm along the same lines as you guys, other than Albert, who had 35-10. Uh, but I, I've got 24-20, 24, 20, 24 uh, 20 Cowboys. Um, I do think the Cowboys are good enough. I think the Cowboys are right there, if not a better football team. We're going to find out. And I, I, I just think that they, they've been close. They got hit in the mouth two years ago. Last year, strange game, just didn't fall their way. I thought they were just as, they were right there, good enough to win that win. Those circumstances kind of go a different way, and they typically do in the NFL. So that's kind of what I'm banking on, thinking the Cowboys will go up there and win this game. And if they do, my Monday show is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to be back on with you guys. For Chris Beam, all the callers, I'm Nick Eatman. We will see you on Monday on Cowboys Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?